This interview is brought to you by Burn It Up Coaching and Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self in our 21-Day Challenge. And if you're an entrepreneur or a high achiever and you feel like you've plateaued, you feel like you're stuck, you feel frustrated, you feel overwhelmed, you feel like you're lacking clarity or you're just vaguely dissatisfied and you know that there's more potential in you, the 21-Day Challenge might be the reignition, the refocusing, the re-energizing and the getting of clarity that you've been looking for. So you'll get clear on your long-term vision, where you want to be, your purpose for your life, your vision, all that great stuff. Then you'll learn how to break it down into bite-sized steps. So over the next 21 days, you get a laser-focused goal and you know the steps that you need to take to achieve that. You'll have daily progress reports where you turn in your assignment or you turn in your progress every day on did you complete your task or not. And then also weekly, weekly deep dive calls to make sure that you are performing at your maximum and get rid of any kind of limiting or sabotaging beliefs that could be stopping you from success. So that's the 21-day challenge. If you're interested and committed in joining, send me a message, chris at beergps.com or facebook.com forward slash th3burns. And just let me know you would like to join the challenge and you're committed to hitting your goal and we'll see if it's a good fit for you. Thanks so much for being interested and I look forward to working with you on your 21-day challenge goal. Next is going to be the iTunes review of the week and this was by You Got Sam. You Got Sam says, leap into launching your vision. I absolutely immersed myself with this podcast all weekend. I can speak from personal experience. I used to be the number one procrastinator on the face of this planet. However, after meeting Chris Burns and listening to his podcast and all his content all over social media, I have taken that leap and launched my vision, and it has become a reality in the making. Hands down, so much value and knowledge has been taken away from this podcast. I highly recommend subscribing and taking that leap, just like I have chosen to do. Cheers. Thank you so much, Sam. And if you are wanting to give us feedback, whether it's to improve, you want to let us know what we're doing really well, or just let us know how we're doing, connect and get a shout out, potential shout out on the show on the marathon, then definitely give us a review on iTunes, be your gps.com forward slash iTunes or search becoming your greatest possible self on iTunes or search for it on Facebook, becoming your greatest possible self. And you can give us a review there. We appreciate your feedback and we are looking forward to growing into our greatest possible selves with you two through that feedback. Thank you so much in advance. Again, the next person I'm bringing on, he's going to bring the heat. It's going to be so much fun, full of energy, full of life, full of wisdom. And this dude's brilliant, creative thinker, and I'm excited to have him on. So make sure you stick around to the end because Matt Wright is going to be sharing some gold with us to really dive into how to maximize our potential, our body, biohacking, getting more energy, really clearing out any kind of nonsense or stuff that might be stopping us from living our greatest possible self and our greatest possible health. Matt is a health coach for entrepreneurs, helping them close their contribution gap by helping them build the habits that support the high demands of their lifestyle and using lab testing to find the hidden stressors. He started his formal training as a health coach after listening to over 500 podcasts and seeing over and over how small changes could make a massive difference. In his free time, Matt enjoys cranking iron at the gym, amen, challenging hikes and playing music. And he's here with us today to share and empower us to become our greatest possible selves. Matt, are you ready to rock this? I'm ready to rock. Let's go. All right, we're rocking it. <laughs> you are now live on Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self, Matt. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing with our audience how we can grow and become our best selves. Thank you, man. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's dive right into the theme of the day, which is embodying your leadership. So Matt, how has this principle, this philosophy of embodying leadership played a role in your life and made an impact on you, your career, and how does it show up for you? What does it mean for you? Uh, man, uh, I really think one thing that's been really clarified for me as I've become a coach is how important it is to like live what you teach. Yeah. Like I can't be telling people to like have a morning routine or have an evening routine or go to bed at a certain time or eat a certain way right. if I'm not doing that myself. Like it's just, it's this self magnifying glass. Yeah. Um, so for others, um, that's, you know, you have to really live out what you're, what you're teaching as a coach. And then for myself, um, owning, owning what I want to do, which is in this, in this health space and how I want to build things out and owning, you know, my approach to that so mm. 
Beautiful. So being in integrity with what you're teaching and preaching, it, you have to do that owning your leadership of yourself, being the example, being a being a product of the product, uh, so to speak, as well. You know, like you you eat your own cooking, all that kind of stuff. And then in owning your, your vision for what you want to create and how you want to impact these, these entrepreneurs' lives and people around you and their health, you have to be that leader. You have to embody that and live that in, in every way, shape, and form so that people actually get the message. And that's your life's work. That's your life's calling. So what better way to invest your time and your energy and your focus? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Love it, man. Love it. Awesome. So that's the question of the day. Let's dive into a little bit more what it means to be a functional diagnostic diagnostic nutrition practitioner. That's a mouthful, man. Tell us more <laughs> yeah. about that and what you're doing in your health coaching. <laughs> yeah. So so FDN is a it's you know a certification program and it, and it teaches us how to uh, interpret uh, lab work and create healing protocols for people. We specialize in, in finding what we call the hidden stressors, which is uh, hormone, immune, digestion, detox, energy production, and nervous system. Wow. Um, and we address that. Our healing protocols are based on diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation, Beautiful. or simply dress. So hidden and dress is mm. kind of FDN in a nutshell. Wow. That's awesome. And your work specifically, you focus on entrepreneurs. Tell us why you why you chose entrepreneurs. My last job was working kind of as the right hand man for um, for one of these internet entrepreneur guys, and I saw that the really the the most stress. Um, and in my own experience, you know, doing my own online work, most of the stress comes from the lack of a business task assignment and communication mm -hmm. system. And so I didn't arbitrarily pick, oh, I'm going to work with entrepreneurs or business owners. You know, oh, they have lots of money or something. No, that's not why I'm doing it at all. It's because if, if someone wants real results, um, real health results, you have to lower stress. Mm. And you can't just wow. say, you know, it's not just here, take these supplements and, you know, diet, rest, exercise, you know. It's like uh, what other health coach can come in and tell you how to lower stress by streamlining the communication, making sure that the people you are paying money to or actually doing something. Wow. And then at the end of the day, res that resulting in you after removing all the hidden stressors, um, resulting in you having the time and energy to get what you want to get done, done. Yeah. So powerful, dude. Well, I want to go back into the journey. Like, I'm so curious. I know our audience wants to know too, why, why health coaching? What, what, what was the initial, you know, mindset to be a coach? Like, how did this journey evolve? Like, where did it all start for you? Um, well, there's kind of like two two stories. Mm -hmm. um, so first off, I think the, the more powerful one, but perhaps the less relatable one is that uh, as a kid, I actually had severe behavioral disorders. Um, mm -hmm. And so like I was like chewing my nails down to where they'd like bleed. Wow. Um, and I was getting like these two and three times a day, these little, uh, they were called pink slips, which is like a, some kind of disciplinary paper that I would get in my third grade class. Right. And my third grade teacher had been seeing this naturopathic doctor hmm. and she had had awesome results. And she tells my mom who was a nurse, right? So yeah. she's supposed to know this, right? <laughs> hey, I think this kid has food allergies. And it's like, what do you mean he has food allergies? No, he's got like ADD or ADHD or wow. whatever. And, and she's like, no, you, you should really go get him tested. So we did allergy tests. Um, and uh, in those days you get all these shots in your arms. And it, there's a difference between food allergies and food sensitivities. So food mm. allergy is something where it's like, if I eat um, tree nuts, like my throat closes up. Okay. That's an allergy. A sensitivity is something that your body reacts to. Mm. Um, so I had food sensitivities to um, corn, wheat, and soy, and also broccoli and a couple other things. Mm. And I remember it was like, yeah, I don't have to eat broccoli, but I love broccoli you now. <laughs> um, but corn, wheat, and soy, dude, those are in everything. everything and so we yeah. took those. Um, I'm sorry, my camera dropped. Um, I'll get that going. <laughs> Look at that sexy beast. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> fun, ladies, man. ladies, he's yeah. single. Actually, I don't know. <laughs> I am. <laughs> For now. Yes. <laughs> For now. <laughs> Not after this show, no. <laughs> <laughs> I always have too much fun doing these interviews. <laughs> anyway, so um, so we removed all that, all this stuff from my diet, and it was like crazy because like all the kids at school, like I was the outcast kid because I was eating something at l different at lunch, right? It was right. like I didn't have like a pudding cup or something, and it's like this over two years there was this complete 180 in my behavior, oh. and like 
so many parents, like it really like it, it's, it's a little bit of a weight on my heart that so many parents don't know that that can be the cause mm. um, of their child's behavior. Wow. Like just change a couple foods and like a food sensitivity test, at least the, the more entry level ones, they're like 150 bucks right. and you just take out all the foods and it's like, that's it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, absolutely. It could be something deeper, but like, that's all it was for me. So I had this incredible turnaround. I feel like my whole life, um, it's just kind of been an up and up since then. And, uh, so this, the second reason, the reason that the thing that really gave me trajectory to actually getting a certification and, and the desire, um, to help people was, um, in, in the summer of 2017, around July or something, my mom called me and she was at Whole Foods and she was like, Hey Matt, they had this bulletproof coffee stuff on sale. And I was like, sure, you know, get it, get it if you want, you know, whatever. <laughs> And, um, and so she gets it and I try it for a couple of days. And I was like, Whoa, like, this is like, I've never felt this good. Like I got up, I did a workout. Like I didn't eat till, till 2 PM. Like wow. this is so convenient and awesome. Mm -hmm. And, um, so then I started listening to their podcast and I started, I listened to enough of them. I was like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to listen to some, I'm going to go all the way back to number one. So I go all the way back to number one. And the first interview is with a guy named Sean Croxton, who was also, was also an FDN practitioner. He moved into the kind of personal development space. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started listening to his podcast. I started listening to like just all the, the podcasts of the people who got interviewed. Mm -hmm. And I was I started working for uh, the, the last guy I was working for. And he was doing kind of some online coaching and consulting. And I was like, wow, like this is so powerful. And like I just heard story after story. Like, I mean, let me give you some stories I heard today. Um, I was listening to an audio book and this this um, – this woman had a sensitivity to wheat. And so, so when wheat breaks down, it, it should break down into all these individual, imagine it's like a pearl necklace, okay? Mm -hmm. And so you have all these individual little beads and all those beads individually are amino acids. Mm -hmm. That's what food breaks down into. But strings of them are called peptides and you can have sensitivities to individual peptides. Mm -hmm. The most popular test to test for celiac disease only test one out of 60 plus of those possible peptides so this girl goes to her doctor she's having behavioral disorders neurological dysfunction mm -hmm. and they admit her to a psych ward and they put her on yeah not even joking they yeah <laughs> they admit her to a psych ward they put her on on you know crazy mental drugs mm -hmm. and the symptoms don't really get better and so this goes on for i think a year or two and then, and then they, she lost 15% of her body weight. That's crazy. Damn. And then, and then, so they're like, oh my gosh, we got to fix this. So she goes to a nutritionist and, and the nutritionist says, well, let's try a gluten-free diet. Hmm. Turns out she had a sensitivity to wheat. They remove it. And in a week, everything turns around. Wow. Small changes, big impact. Dang. There was another, there was another woman, um, who, who had a, a sensitivity to EMF, you know, the stuff mm -hmm. that's put off by Wi-Fi and our, our phones. And, mm -hmm. and the source of it is actually just current running through wires. That's where EMF comes from. Mm -hmm. And that's electromagnetic fields. Mm -hmm. And this lady had a sensitivity to it and she started getting seizures. And so they, they, they do all the labs, they get, they get her eating the right food, she's going to bed on time and everything. And you know what it came down to? Mm -hmm. It came down to her unplugging the alarm clock that was next to her bed. Oh my gosh, wow. Oh, that's man. awesome stuff yeah yeah and it's it's like being a student of life being willing to study every aspect of life and how everything our environment is a laboratory you know our our, our home our bathroom our bedroom our office all of it is a laboratory mm -hmm. and if we're not paying attention the environment could be sabotaging us without even knowing it and especially you know let's talk about foods stuff that we're putting in our body that's like super integrating with with our internal you know uh, ecosystem so to speak and if we're not careful about that it could be wreaking tons of havoc yeah yeah, absolutely. I was Dang. thinking about that on the way on the way home today. I was just driving. I was listening to that book, and um, I was like, you know, environmental pollution isn't just air and water. It's like, mm. it's it's our homes. It's the light. It's yeah. it's the types of electromagnetic fields we're exposed to, mm. and just everything. You know, 
Dude. So powerful. So powerful. So now you're this uh, functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner and you're awesome. rocking that. You're the health coach. And yeah. let's start diving into like really we wanted to talk about adrenal fatigue and why it doesn't exist and you know how to really get more energy now. So let's start diving into that. What's the foundation? We, we probably started already talking about some of the principles that we need to know to be able to create more wellness, create more energy in our life. And let's just go where you want to take us, Matt what we need to know to really be our greatest possible health and greatest possible self. Okay, awesome. Um, so here we go. Adrenal fatigue doesn't really exist. Your adrenals um, are these, so here's like your kidneys. They're kind mm -hmm. of this bean shape. And the adrenals mm -hmm. are just this little gland that sits on top of your kidneys. Okay. Those are not made to shrivel up and stop working and die. <laughs> <laughs> They're not. A an example <laughs> of something that is made to stop functioning is ovaries. Mm. I just think this example is just so funny. Like, wow. oh, my, I have adrenal fatigue. They aren't working anymore. It's like, no, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the way um, we're taught to look at this, this relationship in functional medicine is that there's the hypothalamus, mm -hmm. so kind of in, in center of your brain-ish. Then there's the pituitary gland, mm -hmm. and then there's the relationship to any other organ in the body. And so in this case, it's hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, okay? Mm -hmm. And so the hypothalamus is kind of like, imagine that's the processor for all of your senses. Oh, I smelled wow. something. It, it smells bad and I'm, I need to get out of here. Or um, I, saw, I saw a bear and it's like, or I heard a bear. Or, you know, mm. all of these sensory inputs come into the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus sends out something to tell the pituitary what to do. Wow. And then the pituitary sends that down to the adrenals. Okay, so we've got, we've got hypothalamus, mm -hmm. pituitary, adrenals, and we've got these messengers in between them. Okay. And so when you are in a state of chronic stress for an extended period of time, any piece of that can kind of become desensitized. Like, hmm. I mean, it's just like if you're using drugs or something. Okay. Hmm. So you, you take heroin or something. Oh, I have to use more heroin, more heroin, more, more heroin or something. Hmm. It's the exact same way with, with any foods that you eat that stimulate your brain in that way. Um, as well as like really any stimulus, if you think about it, there's a, a desensitizing. So I like to think of this as there's there's five places where this can go wrong. It can be uh, desensitization in hypothalamus, um, desens uh, poor functioning of the pituitary gland, mm -hmm. um, poor functioning of the adrenal gland, which is called Addison's disease. And really, really, mm -hmm. what I mean by that is the just the links in between HP and PA, HPA right. axis. And then there's um, actual adrenal insufficiency. Okay. Um, which is like, hey, we got everything in line, but it's still not working, hmm. okay? And then the last place is that cortisol actually has to go into your cell to, to be energy. And so when, when we say cortisol, I don't want people to think of it as like stress hormone, lower, 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 because it's actually um, the, the kind of – it starts pretty high actually when you wake up, and it's supposed to be this little mountaintop when you wake hmm. up, and that, that's – gives you energy and lets you get out of bed in the morning and then mm -hmm. it's supposed to kind of decline pretty hard into the noon and then a little lower in the afternoon and low in the evening right and when we look at something like a cortisol rhythm test we can tell by um different elevations or different you know points at which this chart is low where you're having a problem mm -hmm. and so if we wanted to further investigate um beyond just hey this is low why is it low there's neurotransmitter tests you can get into to check what's going on um, kind of more in the brain. Right. This, and that, one, of, one of the things that you, I know, promote is, is testing, getting, getting that awareness of ourselves. So I think before we go any further, let's talk about that. How do we get the awareness of what, what is happening in our body? How do we know what to test? How do we know when to test? Mm, totally. Um, so there's, imagine a meter, okay, from zero to 100. And your, your body before it gets symptoms, it's already working to compensate. So by the time you have small symptoms like brain fog or um, you can't go to the bathroom very well anymore or your sense of smell is dulled or um, there's different, different ways, you're, different signs you can get on your fingernails or just redness of the face or the ears, um, all of these are, are small signs. And so I would just go on like Google and search like signs of food sensitivity. And you can familiarize yourself with a much longer list um, of small markers. You know, it's like, oh, man, you know, like I get back from the gym and I'm sore for like five days and I got to take a painkiller. I just hmm. I just have to take this little bit of 
you know, prescription medications. Like that's not normal, man. Mm. Symptoms are common, but not normal. Um, so when you're getting symptoms, you're already, you've already been in a state of dysfunction for a long time. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as, as getting more familiar, um, so as part of the FDN program, I had to do some of the lab testing on myself. Mm. And when we, we reviewed that testing, we found out I was in some degree of what we would call HPA axis dysfunction. And it was weird because at the time I had this like super tight sleep routine. I was eating really well and everything. And I was just like high on life. Like my, I, I was stressed, but like that positive kind of stress, like, mm-hmm. woo, like I'm so excited <laughs> to be doing this. Whoa. Um, and so that actually resulted, it's, it's like I was delusional. Like I was doing all the healthy stuff, mm. but it didn't actually result within my body what like was supposed to be resulting. So you so can't like just a, be there's high, a, high on life all the time. There's a, there's a state of health. There's a function of health. Like there's, there's so many different parts. Like I think that's a really great, great point here is like, what is healthy? You know, what, what, it, what does it mean to be healthy? Does it mean mm-hmm. to be healthy to just be having lots of energy and you can be happy and you can be excited and you know, you sleep well? Well, maybe. And maybe there's other deeper levels of health that we can actually look at, like you're talking about right now. Like, are the are the pathways working as effectively as they possibly can? Are the receptors, mm. you know, are they are they receiving all they're supposed to be receiving? Kind of thing. From what I understand about what you're saying. Yeah. No. That's that's uh, that's spot on. Um, my mind just went blank for some reason. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know where I was going to go next. Um, so a lot of people ask me, they're like, you know, I want to get to optimal health, you know, right. and it's like, what does that really mean? Mm. And so instead of thinking like, I'm going to arrive at this state of optimal health and like, then I'm going to be there. It's like mm. weightlifting. Like I don't go to the gym and like, oh yeah, I can move 65 pounds. Like I'm done. I don't have to go to the gym anymore. It's, it's either death by a thousand cuts or <laughs> life by like every single little base hit. Yeah. Um, and so like if, if someone came to me and they said, Hey, I want optimal health. Um, well, let's look at, let's look at what some science says. So I was reading, uh, I was listening to a book in the car. Mm-hmm. They took 400 people who said that they had no health complaints and they, they tested them. And what they found was that 50% of them had some level of um, antibodies to wheat. So there was stuff they were eating because a lot of people are eating wheat and it, and their body was having a reaction to it. Hmm. And in a majority percentage of those, they also had elevated antibodies to myelin, which is basically think of it like the connective stuff between your neurons, dude, like that's on the pathway to MS. Like when your brain, when your neurons are, are that myelin is, is being eaten away because your body thinks it's something bad. Wow. Like that's the road to autoimmunity and to MS. So it's like, oh, we're, I don't want you. I don't want to do all these lab tests because you're going to find something wrong if you dig for it. It's like, yeah, I am, but that should really excite you <laughs> because here's your trajectory now. Oh man! Like, let's change it. Like, yeah. let's make your future awesome. Like, when you're 90, like, I don't, I don't believe in, in oh, you're 90 and your brain's just going to fall apart. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, there's some degree of that, but like, what's common is not normal, right? Well, what what's common is neglect what's Mm. common is like you didn't take the preventative steps when you were handed the prescription so to speak the action set the behavior changes and of Mm. course your body's going to deteriorate deteriorate at some level over time just because that's like life and that's the environment that we live in and you know we don't live in a in a um what is it like a clean room, right? To always be, <laughs> to be, you know, like perfectly nourished and and supplemented with all the right ingredients at all the right times. We're still developing that capacity and that awareness of even how to do that, how we would accomplish that. So, you know, I think it's it's important for people to recognize, like, yeah, you're you're probably going to have a lot of stuff come up on these tests if you're living a subpar life in terms of your health and putting stuff in you that you probably shouldn't, which you probably know. And what better way to, you know, be aware of that, become aware of that than with the support of a health coach like Matt, so that you can start taking new actions so that you can start making those changes now. And even if you didn't make any changes right now, at least you would know why things are happening in your life that you 
didn't know before, which is super important, the awareness of it. Once you know and you don't take action on it, then that's that's you. That's on you. That's your ignorance. That's your, you know, pretending to not know versus not actually knowing, which a lot I think a lot of people are uneducated these days about health, about their body, about what they're putting in it. So let's bring the education. I love it. <laughs> Everything in moderation, including moderation itself. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. So so we get clear on on testing. We find out more about ourselves. Tell us about that that process of um, getting our, our lab work done and what we should expect or anticipate in that, where we should go to get it done, how like what's that process like? That's a that's a big topic. Uh, okay. let's break it down into three things. Um, let's let's talk about how how most doctors are taught to interpret labs. Okay. Let's talk about doing it yourself, and then let's talk about like what a healthy process would look like. Okay. So um, when lab test range values are established, basically they just go out and they get a bunch of people, which is the general population, who are unhealthy. And they say, here's the highest, here's the lowest. If you're somewhere in there, you're in the population. And it's like... <laughs> Doctor pulls out the paper. Oh, well, you know, everything looks in range here. It's like, well, in range is unhealthy, man. <laughs> so, so in my training, um, we always have optimums that we're operating off of. Okay. And we always have, have patterns like, oh, if this is low and this is low and this is low and this is high, it points to this type of condition. Right. And disease is really not, it's not just an on-off switch, right? Mm. It's not like, oh, I have Parkinson's one day and I, I don't have it the next or I, I don't have it and then I do have it. It's like, it's this progression yeah. for 10, 20 years. They're like, think about it. People who have cancer, they're like, oh yeah, you know, he was, he was so happy the other day. And then he got the, the diagnosis and now he's like all glum. And it's like, well, it's because your body's been in that state of dysfunction for a long time. Yeah. And then the symptoms start to actually manifest appear. Mm -hmm. So, so doctors aren't really trained on how to look at lab tests and mm -hmm. correlation and optimums. Um, the other thing you're not going to get typically with a general practitioner is um, the consideration of the lifestyle. So in my own practice, it's like, what are all the lifestyle factors and what do the labs say? And we, mm. we put that together and we get what's called clinical correlation. Mm. Oh, well, like you work at a, uh, you work at a, a facility that like makes aluminum gates and there's chemicals in the air. Well, the lab tests say that you have, you know, some kind of chemical exposure. It's like, mm. that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. How do we, now how do we work on that? So, um, Number one is doctors. Number two is if you try to do it yourself, you probably don't have the necessary training to get really as much out of it as possible. I even had a guy who messaged me. He's like, hey, Matt, I got a bunch of blood tests done, and they, they told me this. And I was able to spot um, a pattern in there, and I was like, dude, you might, um, you might have this gene polymorphism, which is like a, a slight change. And so now he's going to have to change something um, with how he approaches his treatment. But even the person, like, giving him the results of the test was not fully trained on how to interpret them. Wow. Or um, another test I see that's <clears throat> popular but useful, um, but not the first test I would go after, is like something like telomeres. It's like, okay, like I'm going to – so there's there's these kind of nerve endings uh, called telomeres, telomeres, mm -hmm. or telomerase. I've heard it pronounced a number of different ways. Mm -hmm. And it correlates with um, kind of your biological age. And so it's like you get this test back. And you're like, oh, it says I'm plus 10 years. Okay, well, what do you do with that? Mm, <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like it's not enough information um, to really operate off of. So mm. um, that's doing it yourself. And so number three is kind of a correct process. So if I was to take someone in, there's five labs that um, I've been specifically trained in to be able to overlap all of the, the data from that and make a interpretation on um, and there's little variants, you know, I can get individual markers for things. Um, and I'm learning about more stuff always, mm -hmm. um, like the neurotransmitter stuff or the autoimmunity stuff or awesome. uh, deeper hormone testing. But if someone is to come in, um, <clears throat> if they, if they want to go full force, we can just get all five. And that's the best way to do it. Because right off the bat, we can, we can make a big dent in, in where you're at. So I, I like to think of it this way. When you're, when you're at a point where you're like, oh man, like I've had these symptoms forever. Doctors aren't helping. I need to fix this. Mm -hmm. It's like a bent piece of metal, right? And so people go onto Facebook um, and they're like, hey, what supplement do I use? What diet do I use? What, um, 
what biohack do I use? And it's like, it's not always about that because mm. it's diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, supplementation. Yeah. And so people are going and, and picking out of these individual categories mm. without really knowing what's going on. Right. And I'm like, that's, that's not going to work. So right. diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and you can actually bend that piece of metal back. You can get it heal get it straight again hmm. um so the the five tests that i i cover i know this is a lot of information i love it uh, <laughs> there's a uh, metabolism profile mm -hmm. there's a um, hormone profile so it's like how well you're digesting where your hormones at then there's a pathogen um pathogen test so it's like what's going on in your gut um and there's a couple of different tests you can use for that um there's a food sensitivities test of course as well as a um intestinal permeability um, intestinal permeability test. So do you want me to dive in on, on what Let's all those mean? Yes. Okay, cool. Whew. This is a <laughs> lot of stuff. <laughs> took me six months to go, go through all this. So <laughs> me metabolism profile, how well are you digesting? When you eat something, do you have sufficient stomach acid to break it down hmm. or is protein and fat just being excreted and not being used for actual nutrition? Cause you could be eating really well. But um, you could be eating really well, but it's not actually being absorbed. So it's like, mm. oh, I'm going to the gym, I'm sleeping right, I'm eating well, but I have internal damage, which is preventing me from getting all the nutrition. Now, one of the markers on that metabolism test is called UBA, or urinary bile acid. And so what's mm. happening is um, bile is squeezed out of the gallbladder, this little thing above, above the stomach. Imagine like a little, like, you know, those little bike horns? Yeah. Or are you yeah. excuse me? <laughs> yeah. um, I imagine it like that. Okay, so it, so it squeezes out bile, mm -hmm. and then that helps break down protein and fat. Okay. Um, and so that's supposed to actually recirculate through the liver. And if and if excess is being um, leaked out or it's low or high, that can actually point to not just how well are you digesting things, but how well are you detoxing things. Mm -hmm. And so detox isn't just hey, I got exposed to these chemicals and like I need to get them out of my body. It's also like hey, the body produced a little too much estrogen or something and it needs to bind it up. Hmm. So then you can start getting these symptoms of um, you know, estrogen dominance or, hey, I've got low testosterone. And it's really just because your liver isn't working, not because like, hey, I'm not producing enough testosterone in the first place or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what the metabolism profile uh, can point us to. The hormone profile, um, hormones are really kind of a result of all the other stuff. Um, so as far as that, I'm looking for different ratios. Mm -hmm. um, for example, we look at uh, progesterone to estradiol. There's actually all these different breakdowns of estrogen. Um, there's three. Um, and then we get testosterone. So yeah, testosterone, estradiol, estriol, progesterone, and melatonin. Mm -hmm. And so just one thing we can get off that panel is if the melatonin is low, um, even though melatonin is kind of known as like the sleep hormone, um, it's actually all made in your gut. Okay. Mm. Wow. So, so if you, if you have internal damage, something messing up your digestion, it can affect your sleep yeah. and then your sleep is affected. And then now your body can't repair and then the things get worse. So it's this vicious cycle of like yeah. one, one little chink in the armor sets off this whole cascade, right? That's powerful. So we, we talked yeah. about metabolism, how really making sure that we have uh, everything functioning properly in our digestion. And I think you mentioned that it's not just the digestion, but it's also detoxing, right? So there could be things that are in our body that got put in or we put it in or whatever it might be. And then it's important to be able to process that effectively. So not only, you know, what we get and receive and gets that gets transmitted to our body and throughout our body that we want, the, the nutrients and stuff, but also what our, what we're able to take from our body and our blood and stuff and detox that and, and put it out and put it out in, you know, um, whatever that might be peeing or pooping or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what yeah. it is. And, th and then there was the hormones, which it's, yep. it's important to know what hormones were, were high or low in because that could be affecting our mood. It could be affecting, you know, how we, how we show up, how we perform, how happy we are and how much sleep we get. Yeah. So sorry, real quick, just to jump back in there. So I know that there's, um, two different pathways that testosterone can go down mm. and, so it's like, oh, I have high testosterone, like I'm building muscles, but it, I'm losing my hair. Mm. And so that's kind of this funny thing between this relationship where people who are particularly muscular or have more testosterone and also this, this um, hair loss. Yeah. And so there is a test you can use to tell exactly 
which pathway all these hormones are going down. Or there's wow. three different pathways that estrogen can go down. You can do this test, and literally, it's just as simple as you know, take some of this supplement, and now all the estrogen is going over to the right path, and you're literally not on the road to get breast cancer. Wow, wow, that's incredible. So that's the metabolism and the hormone tests. Let's dive into the pathogen test. Yeah, so the pathogen test is basically like when you eat food, um, there's things, uh, viruses, uh, pathogen, or uh, viruses, bacteria, yeast, fungus, um, all this stuff that can get kind of like caught in your gut. And so your gut is kind of like, like imagine there's all these little dudes living in there and they help, they help break down, break down the food. Okay. And right. there's good dudes and there's bad dudes. Right. And it's kind of like, it's almost like a, like a plant, right? Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's like a fungus growth. Okay. <laughs> Which sounds kind of gross. Um, <laughs> but there's a certain level of balance and there's kind of like good species and bad species. And there's, you know, like different, you know, worms and things that can take hold in your gut. And so it's like, do you have one of those? Yes or no. How are you eating? Like, what are the sources of your food? Like, did you travel out of the country recently? Mm. Or, um, or do you eat like a lot of like super low quality sushi or something? Like maybe that's where you got it from. So lab results plus lifestyle. So, um, and, uh, one of the big things there, uh, there's an, a, a, uh, there's a pathogen called H pylori, um, which can, which it flourishes in the acidic environment. So here's, here's a dangerous thing about going into Facebook groups. Oh, you know, I'm having gut trouble. Like I can't go to the bathroom. Well, you know, like, uh, I have this set of symptoms. Oh, well just take digestive enzymes with, with hydrochloric acid. Well, if you do that and you have H pylori, it's going to like vastly accentuate it. Wow. And so it's like, maybe digestive enzymes would help. Right? right. And so when we're talking about supplementation, like how to, how to help. Uh, fix this stuff, um, you, there's two kind of routes of supplementation and there's mm -hmm. intelligent allopathy is what it's called. So it's, I, I just think of it like something to make you feel good. Okay? okay. Oh, you're having constipation. Let's give you something to make it easier to go to the bathroom. Oh, you have lower cortisol. Let's give you some licorice root or let's give you some of this, or that, you know, and then there's the stuff that actually helps fix it. So th in like an herbal protocol that I would put together, it would be the herbal protocol that's going to help um, release and eradicate that stuff, mm. it might not feel good to do all the time. Right. And then there's going to be stuff that's going to make life a little easier for you. Mm. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I hear that there's a lot of people, it's funny because one of the things that they talk about with um, regular traditional medicine and drugs is that it's just uh, covering up the symptoms, right? And it's mm -hmm. just like uh, masking it. And I think that at some level, people want to do the same thing, but with with herbs and with with the herbal remedies and with that natural um, naturopathic medicine. Biohacks. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, biohacks. like, oh, I can't sleep well. I'm going to use a biohack. Well, cool, but, like, why aren't you sleeping well? Right. <laughs> right, and it, I think it's just – it's fascinating that even though people are, are getting they're they're finding a better solutions for sure because like you know prescription drugs oh man <laughs> and, Crazy. and then and Crazy then stuff. like going to natural solutions much better and like it's really about why it's getting to the to the root cause so that we can operate at a you know a long a, long, a longer like longevity and consistency and over time to have that be eliminated or severely reduced so it's not even like a, an issue anymore so i think it's it's funny that 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 tent that trend continued just a little less severe yeah 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 that's awesome. Yeah. So the next thing is going to be the food sensitivity test. Tell us a little bit more about that. You already did with yourself, but um, mm -hmm. thing, anything else we should know about it? Um, yeah. So let's go over how those work. It's really okay. fascinating. Okay. Um, so the cheapest one is um, it's a little finger stick test. And so you would just receive a little kit in the mail mm -hmm. and you get one of those little, I don't know if you've ever done like a blood draw for yeah. like testing pH or I don't know, like you have to prick your finger for some blood drop thing. Mm -hmm. And so there's five little um, spots that you drip your blood on mm -hmm. and then you mail it off and like it's that easy. And then you get mm -hmm. a little list back that um, that tells you what foods you're sensitive to. Mm -hmm. Now, the next kind of level up test. Um, so that one, I think, tests for 76 foods. Um, now, the next level up is um, the Oxford mediator release test. Mm -hmm. And that um, you have to go in and actually do a blood draw. So I can't just ship this kind of thing to your house. Mm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to draw my blood at home. Right. <laughs> okay. Good luck. 
have fun mailing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you go, you would go to you know any place where you can get a blood draw and have it sent off to a lab, and then they it's really cool. They set out all these little cubes, um, mm. and then they they is 150 little cubes, and they drop your um, and they drop the different foods that wow. uh, are common allergens into the blood, and then by the by how much it expands or contracts. Um, they measure the immune response based off that. And the wow. report that's generated is like, here's the foods in the green, here's the foods in the yellow, and here's the foods in the red. Mm. And so the most advanced test and the test uh, I'm really excited about is uh, called the ELISA ACT lymphocyte response assay, which is super cool. And I think of it like a history book for the immune system. <laughs> so yeah, so, so food testing is actually kind of um, a little bit controversial because um, for some people, it can prove to be very inaccurate, like we mentioned earlier with the pearl necklace and the peptides, 60 versus they're only testing for one, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Because um, there's stuff that you could have had an immune reaction to in the past that doesn't show up on um, the type of, it, through the methodology that they test this, um, that they test this with. And with the ELISA ACT test, it tells you all types of immune response for all foods and so, like, if someone's dealing with, with autoimmunity, um, so each of those, um, this is super cool. Stay with me. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's something called molecular mimicry. Okay. And so, basically, um, one molecule looking like another molecule. So, when, um, when you eat a food and it breaks down improperly and your body tags it and says, hey, this is a bad thing, let's attack that, it can also attack the things that look like it that are actually mm -hmm. part of your body. So, so yeah, autoimmunity is really fascinating. Wow. Um, so people can get autoimmunity to stuff in their brain, their thyroid, their adrenals, which is Addison's disease. Hmm. Um, is that, is that typically, got, is that typically through lifestyle or food or what is like, I'm sure there's a lot of different causes and yeah. like what, what could people expect or anticipate something like that to be caused by? Um, repeated exposure to foods you have a sensitivity to. Mm, okay. So if you if you wanted to test for this kind of thing, um, I would I would recommend the book uh, "You Can Fix Your Brain" because that's going to give you links where where you can just kind of order these lab tests um, right right off the bat, um, and he tells you a little bit about how to interpret them. Um, I don't know if he's linked that up, but he gives a lot of links where you can just kind of order these tests because okay. a lot of these tests aren't available to necessarily like the general public. Like I can't go to BioHealth Labs and be like. Hey, give me one of these. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you have to be working with a, a practitioner or your doctor. Right. Um, make sense? Yep. yep. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. And then for the intestinal permeability, what do we need to know about that? Okay, cool. So uh, when you so after you digest food, it gets absorbed in your gut, and it's like this whole 30-foot long thing. Mm -hmm. And so um, there are different tests. Um, this test in particular – um, is what's called a challenge test. And so you, you eat this uh, or you drink this special solution, which has small particles and large particles. And your gut is made up of uh, this single wall of cells. The whole thing is a single wall of cells mm -hmm. called the epithelium. And each of those individual cells looks like, like a little like body with some fingers sticking off it. And then all the fingers have all these little hairs sticking off it. Mm -hmm. so, those, so there's like the cell, Mm -hmm. And then there's the villi, which are the big fingers, and then the microvilli, which are all the small fingers. Right. So the surface area of this organ is really huge. So mm -hmm. you, you break down food, and it's going to get absorbed, right? And then all, there's all those cells. They're stacked right next to each other. Right. And what this test tests for is, hey, are your, are your villi being you know, eroded away because you're having a, an allergic reaction to some of the foods you're eating? Oh. Or, and or... Um, are, is the space between those cells increasing? Because mm. what can happen is, is that you, you get malabsorption and thus malnutrition because of reduced surface area because the villi are hurt. Mm. And then you can also have um, this expansion between the cells, which is called para, between two, paracellular absorption. So mm. particles are coming in, they're not digested fully, then they're just going straight out into the bloodstream. And that's actually right where all the immune stuff is made, right? So, so that's, that's really how, yeah, that's what we're looking at. 
Um, so so th- I think is there is there some level of that happening? I think I've heard like there's some level of that happening with everyone, right? Like there's some some level of of the digestion not functioning at its optimal level because of just the lifestyle that we live. Like is that 99% of people or you know what what are the you know what how often does that have to happen? Um I don't have an exact statistic for you. Mm-hmm. I can tell you the kinds of things that damage it sure. are processed foods. So like, I don't know, fruit roll-ups or <laughs> those crazy know, sugar yeah. um, is known to cause inflammation, um, gluten for sure, and as well as alcohol. And so mm-hmm. it's it's like, you know, I had some drinks on, on Thursday and Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's like, I know that that's not always the best thing for me. Everything in moderation including moderation itself. (laughs) So like I'll go out and have some drinks every once in a while, but it's, it's on occasion. And so Mm. the problem really is not, Oh, is it, is it at 70% or is it 50% integrity or, or am I like perfect? And like, I'm always going to like never eat bad things. Right. (laughs) Like that's unrealistic. Right. Right. Have some fun, man. Like that's, that's part of life. Like live to work or you work to live. Mm. Um, so, it, it just depends on the, the frequency at which with your with which you are irritating that uh, that barrier. Like, mm-hmm. uh, you know, if you're sensitive to gluten, are you waking up and having a bagel for breakfast and then a sandwich at lunch and then pasta for dinner and you're doing that for 20 years? Oof. Yeah, you're probably going to get some issues, right? Yeah, yeah, damn. That's powerful. So it's not so much about like the what it's not so much about the likelihood of if it's happening to us it's about like how how is our lifestyle reflecting you know who how we want to show up with our health and i think the biggest access to having clear data on that and knowing what to do is by getting the test so that we can see you know what's going on and also having them be be translated to us cuz we could get the test but like have no idea what the heck we're looking at exactly yeah yeah, yeah powerful powerful man so in a pretty big overview (laughs) yeah yeah no that i i totally get it man i know that like you went to tons of training and like hundreds of hours just to be able to you know articulate this thousands even so like what do we need to know based on everything we've shared so far about moving forward about plans of action about getting more energy about understanding ourselves and really optimizing this information that we've received from you matt yeah um so practical suggestions. Uh, the biggest things I'd say you can do is, uh, number one, I'd say take vitamin C. So mm. humans, unlike goats, do not produce their own vitamin C. <laughs> but we're like the most stressed out creatures ever, right? right? Like when does a goat have like stress, right? And so why vitamin C? is because vitamin C, or sorry, cortisol, which we're needed, which is needed to make us feel energized, is made up of B5 and vitamin C. So if you're putting yourself under all this stress to make your business awesome and you aren't supporting yourself, Mm. come on, man, it's not going to work. Okay. (laughs) And so, so let's talk about, oh, well I can get all my, my nutrients from foods. Okay. So the minimum recommended daily allowance of vitamin C is 2000 milligrams, 10 cups of currants, which has the highest concentration. If you eat 10 cups, like this big, right. (laughs) Of currants has 150 milligrams of vitamin C. Oh my so gosh. if you want to eat like a lot of cups of, of currants, you know, you can go for it, but <laughs> I'll, I'll take some supplemental vitamin C and, and feel awesome. Question, um, question, Bioavail- bioavailability. What do we need to look for? Um, so as far as, as far as vitamin C, mm-hmm. um, I'd get a, a liposomal vitamin C. And so liposomal basically just means suspended in fat. And so that's more um, absorbable to your cells. Uh, Dr. Mercola makes a good one. Um, and then I also have a friend, if you want to go hardcore, Glyco Life Sciences. Okay. And he has something called Camuninas, which is, which is a, a special branded ingredient, um, which means it's, it's, it's a specific ingredient, like certified to do a specific thing. So mm. that's a really good place. It's called, it's called Camuninas? C-A-M-U-N-I. I N A S Glyco Life Perfect. Sciences, I believe dot org, and you'll be able to find it. You know, Cam Camu basically C A M U. Camu Ninas, got it. Yeah. Okay, yep. so so bioavailable 
because because I was taking vitamin C for a while and I was taking in these like hard pills and like mm-hmm. I, I just felt like you know, that may be liposomal. I didn't know. I didn't know the, the terminology or what to look for. But I just like I heard that if you take a pill, a certain type of of you know medicine, that ninety eight percent of it or whatever passes through your body undigested just because of you know the bioavailability of the of the ingredient or of whatever we supplement with. Yeah, I mean, if if you're getting something quality and you're taking it at the right amount, then it's going to, you know, do something. But, like, yeah. when you're taking these, you know, di- all kinds of different supplements, it's like you're not always going to feel something. And then people mm. go, oh, well, I just go I feel something when I'm off of it after I've taken it for a while. It's like, well, yeah, just because you feel something now that you're off of it doesn't mean that it was bad to take it or right. bad to not take it, right. right? So it's not always about feeling. It's about knowing what what is um, healthy for us. Right. Right. So, um, what's your thought on emergency? Have you seen that, that, um, product little <laughs> packet? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's funny because you know, that, that product is not renowned for being particularly quality and it, <laughs> it's not, um, dude, the, the, the number one ingredient is sugar. <laughs> it's not vitamin C dude. <laughs> it's got vitamin C in it though. And so, yeah, for, for a while, um, a couple, a couple, like a month ago or something, like I was feeling tired and I was using the emergency daily, sometimes like twice daily. And it was making a good difference for me. Um, like, you know, it's imperfect action is better than like, you know, like I talked to a guy who lost, who lost 50 pounds. I was like, how'd you do it? You know, like, like, I feel like there's all these like secrets, right? Like I have all this training, but, and so I've talked to a lot of people about weight loss and now I have a good paradigm for what I would instruct someone to do if, if they, their main goal was weight loss. And he said, um, he was talking to a friend. They're like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to start this diet. Cause I like milk. And they were talking about whole 30 and it's like, well, okay. Would you rather be like eating what you're eating now or imperfectly doing whole 30, like right. just do whole 30 and milk. Like right. that's still way better. Right. And I was like, dude, this is, that's awesome. <laughs> it's like inclusive, you know? Yeah. 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 yeah, just just well, okay. So you're not willing to give that up yet. I get it. And what can you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. What what can you do? Yeah. So awesome. So, yeah. So number one would be vitamin C, and then the the second big thing that if you're really struggling with energy, um, go to bed. You know, two hours after sunrise, uh, or after sunset, not sunrise. Yeah. Right. So sun goes down within two hours. Be in bed. Um, that's a good metric. Or you know, honestly, I shoot by ten or eleven. Um, also, um, when you get up, go get morning sun. Like if you're really struggling with energy, Mm -hmm. one of the big things, um, I teach people is micro habits. So it's like, if you start doing a daily walk, literally just like, like my front door is right here. Like just go and unlock the door and step outside Mm -hmm. and then step back in. And that's your walk. Like check the box. Okay. And then start, you know, just going down the stairs or going back up the stairs or, Hey, you go out for three minutes and then back. You know what I mean? So I, I put on my watch and I'll walk outside. I'll usually wear like a muscle shirt. And then when I get to the top of this hill over there, um, I'll take off my shirt and I'll do a set of stretches and, and some push ups and things. I like doing that, you know, but mm. like if you can just get the walk in and get that morning sun in, that's going to set your circadian rhythm. Mm. And then so my last piece, um, if you're like a business owner, what, what I've seen is with most people is that they're, they're freelancers. They're actually freelancers who have expanded their, the amount of business they do beyond their infrastructure and they're trying to, you know, handle things with, you know, sticky notes Mm -hmm. and postcards and text messages and emails. And it all gets lost. It all gets completely buried. I have a whole presentation on this. Um, Actually get a dedicated business communication system, Hmm. Slack or Google voice or Voxer, get something dedicated just to business because you need to have a time where it's 10 p.m. and you're hanging out with your girlfriend or your wife or you just want to not do that, Mm -hmm. like have that separate and turn off the notifications. With Slack, you can set the notifications um, for a time period. And then the Mm -hmm. other big thing, this is actually going to benefit all the people who work for you. The people who work for you are not responsible for prioritizing their work and they're not responsible for the work outside of the hours for which you've contracted them. Mm. And so it is a huge burden for them, for you to be the idea guy and be like, Oh man, like, this is so cool. Like, let's change the button to green and like make 10 new web. And like, and like, it's 6 PM. They're like, dude, I'm off work. Like, what are you doing? This is annoying. <laughs> Get a dedicated business communication system. Wow. So, wow. so vitamin C morning sun, 
dedicated business communication system, those will, those will make a good bit of difference for you. Boom. I love it. I love it, Matt. Dude, you're freaking brilliant. I love this conversation. Great suggestions. I know I'm, I'm committed to doing more of these tests and, and mastering my wellness because it's super important to have that, that. There's tools available. There's resources available. Now it's time to actually put them to use. So for Matt, who people, who, for people, who, yeah, yeah, that's right, baby. That's right. Let's go. <laughs> for people who want to put you to use and help themselves to grow in their health and wellness and achieve their greatest possible health how do they do that with you man uh go to uh m dot me slash matt right fdn and that is my chat bot which will not spam you a million things there's actually a whole learning section and just say say whatever you need to say like hey matt like i'm interested in lab testing or whatever and i'll get a little notification for that and i can talk to you there so awesome. once again m dot me slash m a t t w r i g h t f d n and that'll bring it to my chat bot and yeah. Sweet. Love it, Matt. Dude, keep up the great work. I'm excited to see what you get to, to create from this because I think this is a, uh, a really like a kind of wild, wild west kind of time for, for these types of uh, practices and information. And you, you're totally pioneering it. So I really acknowledge you for stepping up and, and bringing this to more people, bringing the awareness and, and creating a healthier world, man. I'm excited to see how, how you really evolve it and bring your own unique spin and energy to it because you're a freaking brilliant dude and, and very creative, very genius. So I want to see that uh, harnessed and what that looks like moving forward. So keep up the great work, bro. Thank you, and thanks for having me. And can I say one last thing? Yeah. I just want to break a conception that you have to find someone in your area to help you with mm. any kind of functional practice. A lot of the labs can mm. just be shipped to your door, and everything can be done on the phone. And whether it's with me or someone else, um, yeah, it can all be done pretty much online. Boom. Love it. Love it, Matt. Thanks for letting us know that. And, dude, have the best day ever. Everyone, stay connected with Matt. Go to m.me forward slash Matt Wright FDN to stay connected with Matt to learn a lot and he'll be able to support you on your journey. And Matt, we'll see you soon. Have the best day ever, brother. See ya. Take care, man.